Okay. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Rick Sammons, uh, Managing Director uh, at the World Economic Forum. Welcome to this uh, joint press briefing with uh, Mr. Uh, Schneider Amman, who's Federal Counselor of Economic Affairs, Education and Research of the Swiss uh, Confederation, and Roberto Azevedo, Director General of the World Trade Organization, who will provide some opening comments about uh, the informal uh, ministerial gathering that took place earlier today here in Davos. Uh, Federal Councillor. Thank you very much, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Today, 22 ministers, as well as, as, well as uh, WTO Director General Roberto Acevedo, met for an informal discussion on how to build on the momentum of Bali and move forward the WTO. Let me come up with my assessment of the today's ministeri ministerial gathering. We had a good and open discussion this morning, and I want to summarize uh, the discussion in eight points. First, uh, the Bali WTO members have shown that it is possible to conclude multilateral trade agreements. This is an important achievement, and we shall maintain, as I already mentioned, the momentum. Secondly, we concurred that the decisions taken in Bali shall be implemented faithfully and in accordance with the agreed time frame. The third uh, point is we all agreed that preparations for a clearly defined work program on the remaining Doha issues needs to be taken up promptly, building up on the decisions taken in Bali and the central uh, development dimension of the round with a particular focus on issues important to least developing countries. The fourth point is, I take from our discussions that the process towards elaborating a future balanced work program should be based on realism, on pragmatism, and on the principles of transparency and inclusiveness, as well as was it uh, the case in the lead up to the Bali package. The fifth point, in order to achieve this, members should, in my view, be honest, 
listen to the ideas of others and give due consideration to all issues raised in order to identify the doable. Point number six, there was a common understanding that members should also address the difficult negotiation topics relating to agriculture, non-agricultural market access, I'm speaking about NAMA, and services on which progress was not within reach in the past years. Point number seven, in order to be able to successfully tackle these topics, fresh and credible approaches will be needed. Our work shall reflect the rapid changes in today's world. And last but not least, some of us mentioned the contribution of plurilateral uh, initiatives to trade liberalization provided they are concluded on a most favored nation uh, basis. And now a few comments uh, from a very specific Swiss uh, position. I, ex I expressed uh, in the name of uh, Switzerland the urgency to implement the decisions taken in Bali, in particular the ones uh, on trade facilitation. Furthermore, we should continue to work in areas where we could not agree in Bali and that are still uh, uh, outstanding. The third uh, point from a very Swiss perspective was the process to address these issues should be defined carefully, carefully and with an open mind. And this means that we should not shy away from addressing difficult issues such as market access. The Swiss position uh, uh, was uh, in furthermore that I recalled what I already said for the ministerial. I recalled uh, that pragmatism, that frankness, that mutual respect will be key for the future discussions in order to agree on a balanced negotiating agenda. And furthermore, I underlined that, the, that Switzerland sees plurilateral agreements as a useful complement to the multilateral uh, process. And uh, last but not least, uh, I underlined the necessity to continue to firmly resist protectionist trends and to roll back uh, protectionist measures already introduced. You know Switzerland is an open society, you know Switzerland is an open economy. We uh, earn every second Swiss franc in our international activities and that's why we are very, very uh, sensitive to all about uh, protectionism. And that's why I came up with uh, such a comment. We do have to make sure that WTO on a Bali, base, Bali basis is going to materialize and in addition we do everything to establish our bilateral uh, free trade agreements and are very positive to all about uh, 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 the uh, plurilateral uh, ambitions. Thank you. Mr. Director General. <coughs> Director General. Well, Thank you very much. Um, I'm afraid I will be repeating <laughs> a few things that uh, uh, the minister has just uh, pointed out to you. Uh, in the meeting that we had earlier this morning, um, I think I brought back uh, a message to the ministers that were in the meeting, which is very similar to the one that I brought to the business community here in Davos, which is the WTO is back in business. And um, Bali, in particular, which is, uh, I think, the critical moment that uh, changed, like we say, changed the ball game, um, generated two very important outcomes. The first, uh, an economical outcome, which is essentially an impulse that we are providing to the global economy <coughs> at this point in time, very important. But it also provided a new political impetus um, to trade negotiations, both in the WTO and outside. Now, in 2014, uh, we will be shaping the trade agenda for the, for the WTO. Now, 
in the conversation with the ministers, uh, we agreed on several things, uh, many of them already um, uh, spelled out to you. Uh, besides the regular work of the organization, um, we have to implement the Bali outcomes, and that's a very important area, particularly with emphasis to the outcomes which are important to the least developed countries. Um, we also agreed that the implementation of all uh, texts that we agreed in Bali are important, that a trade facilitation agreement in particular should start its implementation very quickly. Uh, we also decided that we are act uh, immediately in order to make progress uh, to conclude the Doha round. Uh, this is a mandate that also came from Bali. We have to provide a work plan to the organization by December. And in doing so, uh, ministers agreed on a number of issues and on a, on a number of elements. And I will repeat some of them. Um, first and foremost, that development is still a central pillar of the negotiations. Number two, that um, the process has to remain transparent and inclusive so that every member can participate and have a voice in the decision-making process. Another important element is we all agree that we have to plan well. We can't rush into negotiations and decide what we're going to do midway. We have to do it from the beginning. And in order to do that, <clears throat> we have to balance ambition with realism. And that's a very important point. So how do we keep the ambition of the negotiations, but at the same time trying to get um, to doable things. So the doability test is very important, and that is something that we're going to be applying throughout the, the conversations. Um, again, like uh, the minister stressed, there was also agreement that unlike what we did in Bali, where we avoided the difficulty issues and went for uh, other uh, harvestable areas, um, we don't believe that that's going to be um, feasible this time around, and more, more likely than not, uh, the crucial issues, the most difficult issues of the negotiations will have to be on the table, will have to be part of this conversation, and they are, of course, agriculture, uh, industrial goods, and services. So those three areas will have to be uh, discussed. They are interconnected, and that's one thing that the ministers also uh, agreed in our meeting, that you can't advance one of those three without making advances in the other two. So they're all interconnected. And they all agreed also that they have to be creative and open-minded, um, of course, following and observing the mandates, but being open-minded about how we move to reach the goals that we set for ourselves. Finally, again, uh, very important, there was a, a recognition that we have, besides the WTO, several trade initiatives going on, many of them of a bilateral or plurilateral nature. Uh, nature. Um, and they all agreed that those can and should, in fact, complement the work of the multilateral trading system. And the members that are participating in these initiatives made clear in the meeting that they are fully committed to the multilateral trading system that they are undertaking these initiatives, but they are also committed to the multilateral trading system, and that the negotiations in the WTO should advance in parallel with all these other initiatives. So it's not a sequential uh, process. It is a parallel process where all move uh, together at the same time. So that's what I had uh, as my notes. Thank you very much. Now let's open it up uh, for questions. Please state your name and uh, provide your affiliation. Who would like to be recognized? No questions. Good. Okay. If there are no questions, yes, gentleman in the front. One question. Uh, Peter Fisher from the NTZ. Maybe one question on plurilateralism. Isn't that the logical consequence of? Uh, the difficulties we have seen in uh, in getting to a general conclusion and negotiations with difficult issues? Shouldn't we expect much more plurilateralism? Well, uh, 
plurilaterals existed also when we were negotiating in previous rounds. Uh, they are, are a part of our daily business. Um, the 1947 texts uh, that we uh, that were negotiated and that are the founding basis of the GET, uh, which was, as you know, the predecessor of the WTO, uh, already envisaged the possibility and, and, and set out disciplines for these uh, non-multilateral undertakings. There are provisions that address precisely that, and they have been negotiated. There are a number of uh, mo uh, plurilateral regional initiatives, bilateral agreements, all over. Um, so this is not new. This is what it has always uh, been. Uh, the only difference, I think, between now and what happened before is that before uh, we were negotiating these initiatives and the multilateral trading system was also advancing. Now, the news is that now these initiatives are taking place and the multilateral trading system had been stuck for 18 years. Uh, that was the difference. Now that the multilateral trading system begins to deliver again, I think it's normal that these initiatives uh, happen in parallel, that they, they go in different uh, uh, tracks, but they all go in the same direction, and therefore they should complement each other. Any other questions? Yes. When can we realistically expect um, a free trade agreement uh, in, 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 oh, apologies, in environmental goods and services? <laughs> First guess is you. <laughs> no, I, members announced, uh, a number of members, I don't know how many at the end of the day, but uh, you, you have the press release, uh, announced that they are undertaking a plurilateral initiative uh, with a view to the elimination of uh, tariffs in certain number of uh, goods, which are primarily environmental goods, as they define it. Um, as I took note of that, this is a, 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 an interesting uh, initiative because it is part of the Doha Round. This is something that we were doing before. We were negotiating the um, uh, liberalization of environmental goods. So this is actually, like I said before, it, it complements what we were doing and what we will continue to do um, to the extent that, um, that this uh, uh, initiative uh, uh, progresses. I think it helps. It helps the negotiations as a whole. Uh, the time frame, the time frame is, is, is entirely up to the participants. And I understand that also what they say is that this is going to be an initiative uh, that will be based on the most favored nation basis, which means the results that they achieve in that negotiation will apply to all WTO members. It doesn't apply only to the participants. It applies to all WTO members. And that they would um, uh, finalize negotiations when critical mass is achieved. Now, critical mass, as you know, is an undefined uh, concept. Um, and my experience as a negotiator is that you know critical mass has been achieved when you see it, not before. <laughs> they are not launching. They are not part of those who are launching the initiative. Uh, as I understand also, this is open. This is an open-ended process, so developing countries that want to join or other developed countries that want to join, I think they are open to do it um, after, I suppose, consultations and conversations with the participants. So it's not a closed process, as I understand it. Very good. Floor remains open. If there are no further questions, I would like to thank uh, Federal <laughs> Counselor and you, uh, Director General. Thank you. It sounds like you had productive meetings here in Davos, and I wish everybody well for the rest of the day. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you.